All right, welcome to Philosophy of Nature. This is about mathematics. I know a lot of my old viewers are afraid of mathematics. You know who you are. Um, and my new viewers, you know, you might be. But don't be. This is a, a little glimpse into the kind of thing that I spend most of my time thinking about when I'm not thinking about what I need to think about in order to make a living. Um, so what we're looking at is a, is a dot diagram. People might notice it's a lot like the um, sunflower. They might recognize there's a golden ratio aspect to this. You've got these curves going out one way, but you can also see the curve going out another way. And it's sort of this perfect packing that you get with the golden ratio for a very good reason. Now the way this is drawn is I have a bunch of points. Um, up here this is just integers from 1 to n. Right now n is 628. So if I move that down you'll see the circle gets smaller until finally there's going to be just Well, zero points there, so let's make that. There's five. All right, and if I start uh, making that number bigger, it spreads out. If you look at it slower, you'll see it's going around in a circle. So it's designed that basically what it's doing is it's drawing a dot. It has an angle and a radius, and it draws a dot. Then it moves that angle by some amount that we can change and it increases the radius by a little amount which is just set to offset it so it spirals around and uh, some of the other examples it'll be a little bit more obvious but let's say we do it here let's slow it down as much as we can and see what it looks like let's go back to zero see it's kind of hard to tell it's going around but it is going around and it's using the golden ratio so basically the circle how much is the angle change is you take the circle and you divide it so for example that's what this uh, value P here is say I divide it by 3 I'm going to turn the number back up to a large amount For some reason, it didn't take. P equals 3. Well, you get 3 spokes, right? If I make P 6, you're going to get 6 spokes. If I get 9, why? Because I'm cutting the circle up into 9 parts. So if we go back down here and watch how it grows, it goes around and around. And right now, P is 9, so there's 9 spokes. You could go ahead and count them. All right, so if I do 15, it's 15 spokes, and so on. Now, what's interesting is when I start using other numbers, like let's say I use pi. Well, pi is kind of close to 3, but not really. How many spokes are there? I think there are 24. Isn't it 24 divided by 7? No, not 24. Well, let's try that. 24 divided by 7. What's that old thing about what pi is equal to? That's what this is. Well, we could just count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, oh, 22. 
Now, yeah, so 22 divided by 7 is pretty close to pi, and that's why there's 22 spokes, the, the top part. The divided by 7 thing gets absorbed a little bit differently. Um, so that's still pretty regular, even though pi is a transcendental number. Let's see what it is when it's e. Interesting. Again, the number of spokes is the top number of a ratio that approximates E pretty well. These outer rings are basically digging into the deep, deep digits of E and revealing that, well, you know, starting around here, it gets pretty well approximated by a ratio, even though it's irrational, transcendental, in fact, meaning there is no ratio that gets it perfect. Like pi, it has an infinite number of digits. Now, square root of 2, which would be 2 to the 0.5, well, that actually it looks a little bit like the uh, golden ratio factor. Now, why is this? Well, it's because square root of 2 is very irrational. And that means that the digits continue to have meaning all the way down. You could count all these spokes and see what a decent approximation is. But the point is, since it has an infinite number of digits, when you split the circle up into it, into pieces of it, the math, it doesn't quite fit. There is no ratio, no number of pieces. So when you force G in there, it's not a number of pieces anymore because it's not going to fit around the circle again. Right, when I split the circle in three, then it cycles around on itself. When I split it into an irrational number, it doesn't quite cycle around on, on itself, but it can look like it is. And what the golden ratio is, is the perfect number for packing everything well. And you get these different kinds of spirals and whatnot. And what I've done is I've, I've made, I'm, I've, like to make hypnot, you know, kind of like, a, I don't know if I should call it hypnotic, but hypnotic uh, <coughs> animations where I parametize these. So this is, um, so I parametize where I have two factors that each one of them moves those dots in or out a little bit. They just go, the radius just gets bigger or littler. So here's if I play one of them. But I happen to put two in there and then I get some pretty nice animations. You should just watch it for a while because it's random dots and it'll it just every once in a while it'll suddenly have a pattern in it and it's it becomes a bit hypnotic. Uh, trigger warning for, uh, you know, epilepsy, maybe. This is all those original dots just moving in and out. No, no rotational angle movements. I have another example where I do that. In a way, just one is, is maybe nicer. All right. OK. 
Take care.